to rush. Sure he wants you to cut a budgie's beak. No, no, I, I wasn't rushing. The, the, the car was rushing. It's the, uh, it's the brakes, you see. He's in here. You'll have to speak up. She's out of hearing. And she can hardly see, but she won't wear her glasses. It's Mr. Harry at the vet. Mr. Farnan couldn't come. He's come to see Peter for you. Good. Poor little fellow. He can't eat with his long beak. A good company, aren't you, Mrs. Tomkin? The fella said he could talk, but he never said anything. But he is good company. Come on, Peter. I've had him with me for years, and he's never spoken a word. I reckon he's just lazy, or else daft. But still, I like having him to talk to. He's dead. Just now? When I picked him up. Mrs. Tomkin. I'm going to have to take Peter to the surgery. I, I don't think I brought the right clippers. What's he going on about? Mrs. Dodds, does anyone round here sell green budgies? Well, there's Jack Armand up at church. He keeps birds, but I don't know if he keeps green budgies. Uh, Mr. Mr. Jack Armand. Hi. President of Darabee and Oulton Cage Bird Society. Yes, you, have, you got, have you got a budgie? Canaries, budgies, parrots, parakeets, cockatiels. No, I, just, I, just, I just want a budgie. Albinos, blue-greens, barrads, uh, lutinos. I, I, just, I just want an ordinary green budgie. So what size? That size. Now, the trouble with your brand new husband is he's too sentimental. Oh, I don't know. He's got an utterly distorted idea of what being a veterinary surgeon is all about. Don't you agree? I quite like him. Thank you very much. Well, he thinks it's all puppy dogs and feathered friends and lovely <laughs> Yorkshire folks. <laughs> Telephone, James. <laughs> Morning. Just how he likes his bacon. Very lean and very crisp. He doesn't like it the Yorkshire way. Oh, fatty. What a peculiar young man he is. Mm. Yeah, well, how long have you been Oh, I hope you don't think I'm an unsympathetic partner. Oh, no. Yeah, it sounds a bit like it. It would be nice if vets could work regular hours. Regular hours? Mm. Well, if you can just give me your name, we'll call in the morning. <laughs> regular hours? Yes. I'm sorry Mr. Farnan isn't available at the moment. Um, I'm Mr. Herriot. Herriot. Thank you for your confidence. My turn to be low, is it? It's Thursday. Mm. Someday, I'll buy you a set of stools with a matching house and garden. <laughs> that sounds like the telephone. Mm. Well, Siegfried will answer it. He might. Take the water jug with you. Keep your breakfast warm. Good morning, Farnan and Harriet. You know, this is Mr. Harriet. I didn't answer it. I assumed it was for you. No, it's, it's for you. It's, it's Mr. Kendall. Kendall? I'm not in. Uh, so, sorry, Mr. Kendall. He's not in at the moment. Perhaps if you could give me the details. You've pinched my knife. Ju it's just come in. Yes. James, you really mustn't purloin my equipment. It's just lying there. Yes? Yes, Mr. Kendall. Yeah. Do you really like the way she cooks your bacon? Yes. Yeah. Sorry? So huh? Sorry, yes. And you expect to work regular hours? Mm. I have to watch our friend Kendall. He knows the door. Read a book on animal husbandry at an early age and never got over it. Hello, Mr. Kendall. 
How do you do? Brought the young lad with you this morning, have you? I've brought my partner, yes. <laughs> you have a car with a tumour, you said. Why, oh, you're not some bother with that one. Oh, I doubt it, Mr. Kendall. After all, we've got three experts here. Now, oh, don't upset me. I've just come back from the holidays. Pompous ass. Mm. Now we'll see what you're made of. That's an axle job, that, I reckon. We shall see. What do you reckon? Tie her up? Or put her to sleep, or what? Uh, <clears throat> bucket of water, soap and a towel, Mr. Kendall. Thank you. Scalp, please, James. Mm. have another case for us, I believe, Mr. Kendall Calf, wasn't it? Well, what's about, what's about your big lump? What lump? Siegfried, where is it? What? The lump. Up my sleeve. Hmm? I, I will confess to an element of luck. I was just feeling round it and I gave it a squeeze and... Oh, there it was. Up my sleeve. There's always a bit of magic involved, Jim. They said at the surgery I'd see you here. There's been an accident. What, Susie? Yes. She's been run over. Christ. I think it's hopeless. I'm afraid it is, Colonel Bowman. Right. Would you like to hold her head? Mm. What about surgery? Surgery? Your friend in Hartington. Colonel Bennett? What about him? You said he's brilliant. Well, he is brilliant. No limits. Uh, Colonel Bosworth, could you give me a lift home? Mr. Harriet's going to Hartington. I oh, see, Creed. He's he's fine. James Harriet. Yes. Oh, this is grand, isn't it? I suppose it is, sir. Granville. Well, what have you got to show me? Good God. Fractured pelvis, multiple lacerations. Well, that's an understatement. What exactly do you expect of me? I'd like you to try and save her. You've wasted your journey, laddie. I don't think I have. Would you like to help me? I'd like that very much. Come on, then. How do you find country vetting? Well, I... I don't get much time to think about it. Not for me. Mug's game. Ridiculous hours, driving miles over absurd roads, just to get down your belly to knock your guts out. <laughs> but don't quote me to Siegfried. <laughs> <laughs> Down in here. Oh, hello, Granville. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, Granville, hold on a minute, will you? The operation was difficult but successful. You can pick Susie up in a couple of days. Message from Siegfried. A night call on your way home. That sounds like Siegfried. First time in 30 years I've allowed someone to bully me. Well done. I like an assistant who knows a scalpel from a hall stand. Ah, yes. Well, it's very 
Hey, good evening. Uh, my name's Harriet. I'm a vet. Oh, uh, over there, love. He's not from round here, is he? London. Scotland, I heard. Same thing. Game. Well, you lost it again, sir. <laughs> good evening. Uh, I got a message to call. Ah, on account of we bird, you're very good with birds. The only fellow we know can trim a budgie's beak and make the bugger sing. Sam's <laughs> <laughs> bird, you see, he's a bit sick. All right. Where is she? Show him some. Oh, dear. In there. What sort of bird? Uh, a ladybird. Well, she's run off again. Would you believe that? Oh, come on, Come on, Come on, Come on, Come on, It's all right. I've got her. Bad news, I'm afraid. She's dead. He'll kill anything with this lad. <laughs> what did she die of? She died of thirst. Oh, well, it's a nasty disease, that. Very contagious. They're highly infectious. Five pints, love. Right. Oh, that'll be two and three and eight now. I want off somebody. Are you happy, one? Oh. Oh, thank you. Yeah, make that six, will you? Oh, that's very kind of you. Oh, try the other pocket. Yes. I see I'm going to have to learn to be quick around here. No, lad. You've got to learn to be slow. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Excuse me asking, but it's, it's well past midnight. How come the pub's still open? The pub is not open. It wouldn't be legal for this pub to be open after ten. It's a private party for friends of landlords. Have a pint, please, look. Enjoy the private party, young man. But don't go thinking the place is open, because it isn't. Well, it wouldn't be legal. <laughs> Thank you. Dorby. One of nature's victims, James. Husband died last year. Since then, everything seems to have gone wrong. Lost most of her stock, was husk. I generally try to be cheerful. Hello, Miss Dorby. Mr. Harriet, my new partner. Hello, Mr. Harriet. Nice, nice to see you again, Mr. Varnon. How are things going? Well, not so bad. Sam comes in and helps us two days a week. And children do a lot. William, especially now, he's big enough. <laughs> But I'm a bit bothered about them. It's not the husk again. There's not a cough amongst them. Oh, they've probably picked up some worms. They're not lung worms, they're stomach and intestinal kind. Well, me and Sam dosed a lot of them. Didn't make no difference. We can't tell what it is. That's why we called you. <clears throat> Salmonella. Coccidiosis. Uh, some form of poisoning. Uh, everything's a form of poisoning. Uh, Mrs. Dorby, you better give them another dose of the worm drench just to make sure. And uh, we'll take some dung samples for the laboratory to look at. And everything should be. Right. Is that all you can do? Oh, well, you've got to take it step by step. It's a process of elimination. Elimination. Aye. Are we going to lose him, mister? 
No, we're not going to lose them. Aye. Thank you for the tea, Mrs. Dorby. Wave goodbye to Mr. Farnham and Mr. Elliot. As I said, I always try to be cheerful. Cheerful? She expects you to be cheerful. Listen, Jim, you mustn't get too deeply involved with these people. Otherwise, when they're destroyed, you're destroyed as well. Don't worry, I won't get too deeply involved. Off we go, then. You lead the way, young lady. Who is Timmy? He's my dog. And you are? Wendy. Wendy. Uh, excuse me, the surgery's not open. Granville. The great Jim Harriet in person. Oh, this is grand, isn't it? Have you come to see Siegfried? No, as a matter of fact, I want to see you both. How, how, how is he? Well, nothing much changes. Still pinching my best scalpels. <laughs> How's the practice? Grand. Uh, a bit too busy these days. We could do mm. some extra help. That red setter you put together, she's doing marvellously. Glad to hear it. Glad you twisted my arm that day. Jim. Mm hmm? Have you ever thought of specialising in surgery? Specialising? I wouldn't nick your scalpel. Right, tell me what happened. Well, I saw this big rat in the yard, so I got some poison and mixed it in a saucer of porridge. Mm -hmm. And somebody come to the door about some new religion, and I left the saucer on the floor. And when I came back, Timmy had eaten the Can lot. Can I see the poison? If only they hadn't come to the door, they were only after money. Oh, I'll have to make him vomit. Have you got any washing soda? Washing soda? Washing soda. Oh, I don't know. Oh, mustard. Anything to make him sick. Mustard. Yeah. Mustard on the table, love. Oh, and some water. That's a lot. It's enough, isn't it? I'll clean it up. Say that kid to the back, Jimmy. That's a good boy. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha! 
the fresh air. <laughs> I don't know why you want to go for a joyride at this time of night. I want to see what happens on these midnight jaunts into the hills. You could have been chucked up in bed by now. But I'd have been on my own. Evening, Mr. Kirby. Good evening. Good of you to turn out this time of night. Well, I've got my young assistant with me this time. How are you, Mrs. Adia? Very well, thank you, Mr. Kirby. What's the trouble? It's Dorothy. She keeps coughing and nearly choking to death. <coughs> Steady on, old love. Come on, come on. Let's have a look, then. You've got something stuck in your throat, have you? Eh? Let's have a feel. All right, girl. All right, yeah. Yeah, now, I'm going to have to look inside. Will you get the torch, please? Yeah, now, shine it down her throat while I mm. open up. Right? Right down her throat. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, there's something down there. It looks a bit, bit soft. Aye, they pick up anything, won't they? Let's have, let's, let's have the torch. Let's have a look. Yeah, there's some... Yes, I can see what it is. There's something hooked around her the tongue with a bit of string. No, it's not string. It's elastic. Elastic? All right, All right girl. Come on, girl. That's it. All right, girl. All right. Easy. That's it. There we are. God help us. All right, girl. How's that for you, eh? It's a lot better, isn't it? That's it. That's it. It's me summer drawers. Your what? Me summer drawers. I don't like them long johns. When weather gets warmer, I always wear these little short ones. Mother was going to make them into dusters. She was washing them. Dorothy must have got them off the line. I reckon Dorothy's fiddled them this time. You leave them around and she'll fiddle them again. <laughs> I reckon she will. <laughs> All right, Dorothy, let's see if you've got your appetite back. I know, Dorothy, I know. I'm starving, too. It was your idea to come in the first place. You'd have come anyway. You always do. Look, I've told you, a vet's first duty must be to his patients. You'll stop for a bit of breakfast. You're not one of them funny fellas that likes his bacon lean, are you? We what? both like it the Yorkshire way, Mr. Kirby. <laughs> There's real Yorkshire bacon for you. Don't wait for me, just carry on. Oh, fine. Fine. Oh, that's beautiful. <laughs> Let me help you, darling.
Good night, Mrs. Kelly. Good night, Mr. Good night. Harriet. Good night, Mr. Harriet. Good night. Good night. Thank you. <laughs> I'm sorry. Mr. Harriet? job, my piccalilli. Since you enjoyed it so much. Thank you very much, Mrs. Kirby. That's very kind of you. You'll mention it. Good night. Mrs. Kirby. Yours. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've got nothing against it. I thought I'd burst sitting there watching you try and get that stuff done. <laughs> I've never seen anything so funny in my life. <laughs> you were wonderful. Look at that view. Mm. Mm. Go on, I'll race you to the bottom. Churchill again warned in the Commons that Europe is once more drifting towards total war, with a powerful Germany revitalized under Adolf Hitler. It is unser Wunsch und Wille, dass dieser Staat und dieses Reich bestehen sollen. The Chancellor has been taking an increasingly strident attitude to German supremacy in Europe, and fears are growing that he will leave little room for negotiation with the demands he is now threatening. I don't want to live in an attic all my life. If the war comes... When the war comes, we can't have you living in an attic with a baby. Listen some of the time. I listen all the time, love. Um, we don't even know how much it costs. It's two hundred and sixty-three pounds ten shillings. I see. Um, plus solicitors fees. Plus solicitors fees. Yeah. I'm going to have to sell my medals before I win them. <laughs> Go and work for Granville Bennett. Granville Bennett. I'll give you Granville Bennett. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. I won't give you a moment. Private and confidential. Postmark Hartington. Granville Bennett's writing. None of my business. Some more advice from His Majesty's government on what to do in the event of war. If there's a gas attack and you haven't got any gas masks, stick a bale of straw up the chimney. <laughs> That's what it says. Interesting letter? 
It's the lab report on the samples from Mrs. Dolby's cat. Oh. Oh. Is it worms? No. What is it? I don't know. We must write and thank them for their invaluable assistance. Listen, James. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Excluding the breaks in your car, which we've established as a figment of your imagination, um, do you have any serious professional problems? No. I mean, quite the reverse, in fact. Uh, you're in demand. Yes. Uh, you're not overloaded with work? No, no. Well, if you're not too busy, there's a young student arriving next week. Um, we have to look after him, show him the ropes, you know, sort of thing. Uh, I know the sort of thing, yes. It's forgotten his name. He's in his final year at the college. Won lots of gold medals, so he's probably a complete idiot. <laughs> well, I'll, uh, I'll leave him to you then. Look, hadn't you better start surgery? <laughs> little railway station. Yes, we, we think it's charming. Yeah. Uh, do they have any porters? Yes, there are two of us. Oh, I... <laughs> yes. Charming. Oh, still using this stuff? Still using that stuff, yeah. Fortunately, it still works. One of the traditions of the Farnan and Harriet practice is that students open the gates. Ah! I'm here to learn. James, you'll forgive me for saying so, but you were wrong about that horse. It wasn't a sprained fetlock. There was a noticeable contraction of the hoof. I should say it was navicular disease. Look, I'm going for a drink. Oh, what a good idea. At the moment, there are two conflicting theories on the causes of acetonemia. Stevens maintains it's the incomplete oxidation of fatty acids. Stjolima, on the other hand, leans towards liver intoxication. My own view is that if we could only pinpoint the exact cause of the production of diacetic acid and better oxybutyric acid in the metabolism, I think that's game. We just about solved the problem. I hope we never have to use these gas masks. There must be one missing. Pardon? One of my veterinary journals. Is it serious? Well... I'm sure there was something in one of them, a, a case history. Something like Mrs. Dolby's cattle. You're obsessed with those cattle. It's not in the textbooks, and I didn't learn it at college. We thought they might be picking up some worms from the pasture, but the lab report said it... All right, all right, wasn't that. So I'm giving them a course of vitamin injections. Okay, let it go. Come on. Oh, wait. Hey! They're very sick. Yeah. All suggestions are welcome.
Looks as if somebody's already been trying. Mm. Professor Driscoll's bovine cure. Fella across the valley gave me that. Sorry, but you'll try anything when you're desperate. I know. Still, I'm sorry. But you can see for yourself. Will you come and have a look at one of Jennifer's chicks, Mr. Harriet? He hasn't got time. That's all right. I've got plenty of time. I'll go and put the kettle on. Come on, then. It's the wrong one. Oh. Which one is it? That one. This one? She, she's very worried about him. Mm. Mm. Think he ought to have an injection? No. Um, plenty of food, water, and fresh air. And if he doesn't improve, you get your mother to ring me. All right? Mm. It's right bug of this farming, isn't it? It's Mrs. Bond, Siegfried. Oh, thank Good you. Good morning, Mr. Farnham. Good morning, Mr. Bond. Uh, look, I'm afraid I'm rather busy this morning, Mrs. Bond. Uh, but I'm sure Mr. Carmody will look after you. Would you mind, Richard? Oh, certainly. Good morning, Mrs. Bond. Good morning. Uh, this is, uh, Alfred? No, it's seven times three. Oh. What is its name? Seven times three. She's had three kittens seven times running, you see. So I thought it was a good name for her. Don't you? Oh, I do indeed. Yes. Splendid name. Splendid. I'm worried. She's got a skin growing over her eyes. Oh. Oh. Well, I'm afraid I can find nothing wrong with her, Mrs. Bond. More than a very slight paralysis of the third eyelid. Animals have this membrane which flicks across the eye to protect it. In this case, it hasn't gone back. Probably because the cat is in low condition. Maybe he had a touch of cat flu. Now, I've got some powder here. Put a few grains of this in her food and keep her indoors for a few days. She'll soon be all right. Thank you, Mr... Carmody. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Morning, Mrs. Bond. Good morning, Mrs. Bond. Splendid. Uh, what was that diagnosis? Uh, paralysis of the, the third? Third eyelid. Third eyelid, fine. No, there was nothing wrong with that cat. Was there? No. There never is. High summer. Season of full bloom. Pardon? I only hope we manage to survive until the autumn. It's meant to be peace in our time. Has anybody told Siegfried that? He's been doing a lot of shouting. You've upset him. Well, that talk about going to work with Granville Bennett. He's been very nice to me since I got pregnant. Has he? Mm, he's been lovely. Is there any way I can get pregnant? <laughs> what you must do is decide whether you're going to work with Bennett or with Siegfried, and then I know where to go to look for houses. Look, if I may say so, I don't think I'm going to learn much just watching you both doing things. I'd like to get some actual experience in the field. Not just cats with nothing wrong with them. Actual experience in the field? Oh, I think that can be arranged. Nothing very exciting, I'm afraid, Richard. Just a horse with a tumour on a jaw. Uh, you'll have no bother with this one, lad. Is that Colonel Bosworth without shooting again? Uh, if the lads have left him anything to shoot. Uh, there she is. You'll find the thing on her left cheek. She might be a bit playful. Make sure you hold her steady. Oh, so we might as well enjoy it. Oh, sir. 
I'm beginning to like him. Are <clears throat> <clears throat> you all right, lad? Oh, fine. <laughs> Richard, you've got the stuff of greatness in you. You know, we're great, all right, lad. It's worth having you just for the laughs. Thank you. <laughs> hey, uh, I don't like to mention it, but... Uh... Oh, yes, I know. Yes, rule number one, first I have to catch my patient, yes. Say you smell a bit, and I'm used to it. I'm getting quite used to it myself. Practical experience. Would you believe me if I said I quite enjoyed it? Yes. The tradition in the firm of Farnan and Harriet is that students open gates. Oh, hey, up, if that's the expression. It must have slipped out of gear. Oh, yes, I agree. It must have slipped out of gear. Hmm. We need somebody to give us a tow. Hello, Richard. What are you doing up here? Uh... Pardon? <laughs> Who was driving? Uh, nobody. You mean it got here on its own? Yes. I did tell you about the brakes. This car is mechanically perfect. It's disgusting to look at, but mechanically perfect. It also smells disgusting. It's not the car that smells, it's Richard, isn't it, Richard? Oh, yes, it's me that smells. Look, I'm not concerned with Richard's personal hygiene, although he strikes me as an exceedingly clean young man. I am concerned about the way you treat the property of this firm. Touch it. Smell it. You can feel the neglect. Well, the water might help.
Sorry you didn't get that game of golf. <laughs> Goodbye, Richard. Goodbye, James. Look, good luck with the finals. Ah, thank you. Look, I hope your car dries out soon. Come and see us again sometime. Well, we'll probably see each other in His Majesty's forces. In the what? In the army. Oh, yeah. yeah. Jake, oh. No need to rush into it, James. The war hasn't even started yet. Talk to Mrs. Dorby. I'm going for a walk. Well, I'm sorry about the four you lost. You said I had to expect it. The fella at market said you didn't really know how to fix it. Playing for time, he said. He said we weren't going to lose him. Didn't you? Tea, homemade scones, her best china. I expect so, yes. There's a good, honest, hard-working woman losing all her stock, and she comes to us for help, and all we can say is, we'll do our best, Mrs. Dorby. They're working on a new vaccine. It'll be ready next week, next month, sometime, never. And she smiles and says, thank you very much. You will stay for a cup of tea, won't you? And after we've gone, she'll get the knacker's yard to take the carcasses away. Don't get involved, you once told me. I know what I told you. Because it's the one thing that I can't help doing. So sometimes I have to go for a walk or hide in a field. I've been looking at those cows again. I think it could be copper deficiency. Have you looked at the eyes? for your perception, James. I'll come and watch you doing your tuberculin test at Hinchcliffe's. Thanks very much. And you can tell me precisely what he's been up to. Who? Granville Bennett. He telephoned this morning. You weren't in. What did you say? I told him you weren't in. Is it a good offer? He's asked me to go and discuss it. Well, if you want to work in a town, doctoring Tom Katz, fussing over French poodles and the ridiculous owners, certainly make a lot of money. But uh, we've got more than that, Jim.
Creed Farn and Esquire, MRCVS, will hate my guts. You realize that? Yes. He says I'll miss the magic of the Dales. Da, oh, there's no such thing. It's a story you invent to fool yourself that you enjoy tramping around the hillsides in gumboots at three o'clock in a winter morning. No, if there is a great secret, it's lying in front of you on the operating table. It's the size of a pinhead. And you've got to see it, feel it, understand it. Have you resigned yet? Not yet. I wanted to talk to you first. You've talked to me. Siegfried, I think we ought to clear the air. Oh, I'm glad you mentioned that, dear. Uh, if it's a proper partnership, we should, uh, share the load. Discuss all our mutual problems. Well, uh, You I... notice I'm driving. Uh -huh. Sharing the load. Uh, where are we supposed to be going? Mrs. Dolby's. Mrs. Dolby's? Yep. Uh, uh that's, that's the other way. Good little car, this. Pity about the scrapes you've made. The car was already scraped. And you scrape the scrapes, new scrapes on top of the old scrapes. These gentlemen farmers have got all day. Change their mind. Why the hell didn't you tell me about the state of this car? I did tell it's you. It's a it's a wreck. It's a death trap. I did mention it to you. You've got no sense of responsibility. I've been telling you about the state of this car for the last six months. But as usual, you're never flaming well listen. All right, he's clearing out. He's going to Artington, working for another vet. All right. I don't blame him. He's a mad sod, his father. He's another and all. Yeah. What do you reckon we ought to do about that, Ulf? Set your bollocks on to him. <laughs> Send him some of this beer. Aye. <laughs> we'll make him have a ride in Jimmy Harriet's car. That should fettle him, then. <laughs> hey, up. Where's P.C. Dalloway tonight? On holiday. I'm relieving. Oh. What are you having, then? The pint, is it? There's a blackout test tonight. You've got the light blazing halfway across the valley. And it's half past midnight, so I won't have a drink because that would be against the law. I'll have all your names and addresses. It's him. It's Adolf Hitler. Uh. Hello, Farnan and Harriet. Hello, Mr. Crump. Yeah? Oh, I see. Yes. Well, is there any swelling? You seem very happy, you two. Yes, we are. That's no good. I have to find a wife. I've got one or two alternatives in mind, just haven't told them yet. You're meant to ask, not tell. And not them. It's limited to one. Perhaps I could find you a wife at the Darabish show. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'll have to find someone. Especially if you two go off to Granville Bennett's. Mind you, I don't know whether you will or not. 
And James hasn't mentioned anything about it. See, if James and I... Harding, it is a very pretty little town, and uh, Granville Bennett is a brilliantly gifted man. No doubt he'll find you a nice house, and if you go, I shall follow and kick in all his windows, and yours as well, because I love you both. James. I've decided not to take the job with Granville. Thank you. Uh, mind you, if you're staying, you must do something about a house. I mean, you can't expect Helen to rear her young in an attic. We've seen a cottage that we both liked very much. I think we should buy it, James. Yes, I think we should. Monday morning disease. That's what I thought. Took one look, didn't I? Monday morning disease, and on a Wednesday and all. Yeah, well, look, if you can uh, give her plenty of massage. Ah, and plenty of run, I know the drill. I'll be back to give her an injection in a couple of days. Oh, well, maybe you'd like to wash your hands. Yeah, it's fine. Seeing as how you're not in a rush, perhaps you'd like to accept some of my hospitality. Yeah. Wine. Wine? Make it myself. What sort? Rhubarb. Want to try some? Yes, all right. Wishing you a long and happy career. It's, um, it's very pleasant. Glad you like it. Will you try something else? Well, I, I, I really ought to be getting back to my evening meal. What's this one? Elderberry. Do you mind using the same glass? No. All goes down the same road. <clears throat> Beautiful. I never knew homemade wines could taste like this. You've tasted nothing yet. They're not very strong, are they? Parsnip. Dandelion. Cowslip. Parsley. Gooseberry. Beetroot. Crab apple. Turnip. 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 Can I just do that? No, thanks. I don't smoke. We like giving a strawberry to a pig. Thank you. I'd say, Mr. Alice, and you're a very fine veterinary, whatever they say, I'd say, this is comparable, definitely, comparable to a fine Moselle, I'd say, definitely. I'd say this was comparable, definitely, to a fine Moselle. And I've never even tasted this up. I said, I told him. He's a connoisseur, I said.
Somebody knocking. Somebody knocking. As well. Mr. Harrison, Bamford's at Holly Bush, about a mile up road. We have a cow, Kelvin. We phoned Mr. Farnan and he said you'd still be here. Supper's on cold, I shouldn't wonder. On your head. I tell you what, it's raining. It's raining like hell. Hold on a minute. It's raining, see? It hospitality. Ah, hospitality.
Hello. All right. It was an uncomplicated carving, you'll be pleased to hear. It was a nice feeling disturbing someone else at three o'clock in the morning. But where is he? heavy. the job off under you. Palm it off. Would you like a drink or something? Sorry, uh, how do you mean, palm it off? Well, it's no business of mine, Mr. Elliot. Perhaps I shouldn't have said anything. Would you like something? Well, isn't this just for the show? <laughs> Drop of the real stop. Turn him. Yes, I remember that one. Go on, sup it. Happen you'll come back for some more once you've started judging. the look of her. I don't like the look of you. Excuse me, please. still a judge. Here he is, the official vet. He'll decide. Good afternoon, gentlemen. This dog isn't fit. The dog's fit. He's not fit. All right, well, let's just take a temperature, shall we? She's got some matter in the corner of her eyes. Yeah, I've been using powder on her. She's up and got a bit in her eyes, that's all. I'm telling you, she's never been fitter. A hundred and four. She's had a long car journey. She's a bit warm, that's all. I'm sorry the dog is not fit to go in the show. It may well be that this dog has distemper. I strongly advise you to take her home and see your own vet immediately. Next. You two are in this together, aren't you? Ganging up on outsiders. Hey! So fix is this. It was just the same last year. Will Mr. Harriet, the veterinary surgeon, please go to the measuring stand where the ponies are ready for him? Good afternoon. Hey! Got have trouble, Mr. Elliot. Trouble? Oh, I don't see why. You'll soon see why. Which class? Hello. Hello. <laughs> Wh which, which class? He's 12 too. Mm -hmm. uh, now, I'm afraid he's a bit big. Well, have you allowed half an inch for his shoes? Oh, yes, but even so, I mean, you can see for yourself, he's, he's well over. Oh, well, uh, 
past the vet at Ipley without much trouble. Not surprised. Uh, sorry, you, you will have to put him in the next class. Uh, next, please. That's right, lad. Go and be bored. Which class? 12-2. 12-2? Ah! Is James doing all right? Oh, yes. As well as can be expected. Oh. oh all right, he'll qualify 12-2. Have a go. Clever kind of fellow, that. How do you mean? Stick spinning pony, knees sag, withers drop, qualifies at 12 2. I don't believe you. <laughs> Stick a pin in your withers, you'd sag at the knees, wouldn't you? Excuse it's too me. Too late, lad. He's passed. Hey, this dog's had a drink of water. She's a bit cooler now. I, I think you better take her temperature again. I'm sorry, my decision is final. Next post, right. Sorry, would you mind? Now, uh, which, which glass? 12 2. 12 2, my backside. Uh, now, I'm sorry, it's uh, at least inch and a half over. This is a veterinary certificate to say he's under 12, too. Uh, the stewards have told me not to accept any certificates. Uh, everything's got to go under the stick. You've got to accept it. Father! He won't accept the certificate. He has to accept the certificate. Sorry, I'm not allowed to accept the certificate. He'll have to go in the next class. Hey, now I'm going to ask you one more time. Are you going to take this dog's temperature? Look, you'd be warm after a car journey. We've got a certificate. He passed the vet at Hickley without any trouble. The vet at Hickley? Don't worry, lad. I'll take it up with the committee. The committee have got nothing. Oh, a mug, that vet. A prize mug. Worse than last year. Well, Dr. Worley, please go immediately to the beer tent, where there has been an accident. Dr. Worley, urgently, please. Mr. Herriot, I've got a complaint for you. I didn't even win a place for my potatoes, and Frank Thompson got a first with this lot. Well, they do look very good potatoes. I should think they do. They took first prize last week at Brisbane Show. I'd know them anywhere. Frank stole them from the stand. Are you sure about that? He doesn't grow potatoes. That is terrible. But I'm sorry, I, I don't see how I can help. He's a dairy farmer. And that's your department. So what are you going to do about it? Since the stewards have received a number of complaints, they feel it is necessary to remind all competitors that the judge's decision is absolutely fine. Started already, has it? Elderberry? Whoever swiped the challenge cup, will they please return it? Hello, James. Are you having a lovely time? Not really. Are you? I'm enjoying myself. I'm finding a wife for Siegfried. I'm beginning to sense a certain loss of popularity. Really? Uh, have you done the children's pets yet? Not yet. <laughs> Good God, you've hardly started. You should have been here last year. Well, Mr. Harriet, the veterinary surgeon, please report to the children's pets arena. James. <clears throat> the seat of this little game is don't judge the pets. Yes. Look, well, what, what did happen last year? Last year? Hmm. Tell me what you're talking about. You said... should lay off the elderflower wine, James. Mr. Harriet, to the children's pets arena, please. is to ask a few questions of all the children to see what they can tell me about their pets. You ugly bugger! I'm sorry, I don't know where to get you from. You ugly bugger! Oh! <laughs> yes! <laughs> Should we go and see how James is doing with the pets? Uh, well, no, Helen, I shouldn't have had you. Why not? Well, uh, you saw what happened with the ponies. Mm -hmm. uh, well, last year, uh, the pets proved even more disastrous. I understand. Who was the vet last year? Um, I was. 
Oh, um, you were. Now, what can you tell me about your little rabbit? Hmm? Um, can, can you uh, tell me anything about your little rabbit? Can you tell me about your tortoise? He can't walk very fast. Can't walk very fast. Can you tell me anything about your goldfish? In origin, goldfish are actually small wrecked Chinese carp. It's very difficult to breed them in a domestic setting. They should be fed daily. Some of the more common diseases include white spot, fungus. This, of course, is a result of overexposure to photosynthetic forces. Hello, Mr. Kirby. How are you? Oh, middling, lad, middling. Why, what's wrong? Well, I got a second in my brown beans, and only I highly commended him, I shall lot. Oh, uh, we saw them, Helen, didn't we? Oh, yes, um, we did. Beautiful shallots. Ah, and only highly commended. But, Mr. Cubby, highly commended, that's very good, isn't it? No, it isn't. It's an insult. Oh. Ladies and gentlemen, the result of the children's pet competition. Third, number 19, the cockatoo. <laughs> uh, second, number 14, the uh, white rabbit. <laughs> and uh, first prize... Number six, the goldfish. How did that win? It's useless. Bloody bits. Oh, and the, the, the uh, presentations will be made in the main parade ring um, later this afternoon. That's the biggest mistake you've made this afternoon. That goldfish fancier. That's his lordship's son. That's a fix. That's all right. Something won't get grafted in corruption. It's probably made. Worse than last year. If that lad had brought along a stuck monkey, they wouldn't have surprised. It caused trouble with it. Aye, on the dogs. Oh. You won't get bothered. Well, at least I don't have to go through that again. How do you mean? You're on next year as well. It's a two-year acceptance. Uh, no, no, nobody said anything about that to me. Well, there is one thing you can do, isn't there, Mr. Farron? Uh, yes, well, you could always, um, nominate another vet. Oh, well, that's fine. Mm. Well, I'll nominate you. Uh, no, you can't do that. Why not? Uh, I was one who nominated you. Good day. James, here's Mrs. Dolby. Yeah, hello, Mrs. Dolby. Had, uh, had a good day? Second prize for Miss Gons. Would you like one? Oh, thanks very much. How are the cattle? Oh, they're leaping about like daft kids. Here with that stuff you made. What, a copper sulfate solution? Oh. Mm -hmm. Thank you. is London. In a moment, you will hear a statement by the Prime Minister. I am speaking to you from the Cabinet Room at 10 Downing Street. This morning, the British Ambassador in Berlin handed the German government a final note stating that unless we heard from them by 11 o'clock, that they were prepared at once to withdraw their troops from Poland, a state of war would exist between us. I have to tell you now that no such undertaking has been received, and that consequently this country is at war 
with Germany. You can imagine what a bitter blow it is to me that all my long struggle to win peace has failed. Not exactly unexpected. Yet I cannot believe that there is anything more or anything different that I could have done and that would have been more successful. Up to the very last, it would have been quite possible to have arranged a peaceful and honorable settlement between Germany and Poland. But Hitler would not have it. He had evidently made up his mind to attack Poland, whatever happened. And although he now says he put forward reasonable proposals which were rejected by the Poles, that is not a true statement. Why didn't you take your son for a walk? I could show him the hills. Mm. James! It was old man Kirby. Dorothy swallowed something again. My turn this time? Fine. Back in time for lunch. Oh, um, uh, I am invited, eh? Oh, yes, of course you are. <laughs> Off you go. 